If you are watching the video version of this, this Taiwan special logo in the upper corner is going to stay there. I just revamped the marketing and kind of standardized the, the, the little pictures a little bit more than they already were for three different podcasts, the podcast weekly, the Taiwan special now and the point and all three should soon be on Stitcher and in the iTunes store. So this Taiwan special, I'm recording this at a time that's not quite yet in the store. And in fact, all this transition stuff's going on. I wanted to make this video while everything clicks. So this is the first episode where that Taiwan special thing will be appearing in the upper corner. And that's so that when you're watching on YouTube or Daily Motion or wherever else this video ends up, that you know that this was a Taiwan special format because I have a series of different podcasts and all of it has this green screen thing behind me. And so this is a way to tell the Taiwan special and the podcast weekly because of the content. Uh, podcast weekly is usually about, <laughs> you know what podcast weekly is? Well, you're going to have to listen to it to find out what the podcast weekly is. But the Taiwan special is I'm an American. I lived in Asia for 10 years and I have something to say. And a lot of things are clicking. See, I had gone to the State Department to give them my wonderful, wonderful idea. I know that my ideas in politics work. I watch them become law. I could talk about it later, but that's later. I know that my ideas are worth listening to. And when I had a bunch of wonderful ideas that I know are worth listening to, and the State Department didn't want to hear it, just something clicked. I, I was mildly indignant, but I'm, I'm actually thankful because they weren't the people to tell. I should just write to Congress, but I should tell you my ideas. You are more important to tell my ideas to than the State Department. That's really what this is all about. See, in Taiwan for 10 years, I was holding and keeping my peace. I was the foreigner in someone else's country. I don't want to interfere. And frankly, I still don't. But, you know, Taiwan's done stuff to me. And I just... I'm reaching that line where I'm no longer in big fat quotes because it's not true. I'm no longer accepting the things I cannot change, quote, 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 quote. I am changing the things that I cannot accept. Now, I first saw that from Jen Franklin and she's writing over the Pacific Daily Times and she's going gangbusters and she's used Pacific Daily Times and the platform there. She's got people talking to her about questions. She got a law change. That's not the goal of a newspaper, but if you write a story in a newspaper and a law changes, I, I guess your newspaper has some good content. So she's going gangbusters and she's happy and thrilled with what's going on there. <clears throat> My mouth is watering. I think it's because I just drank some water. <laughs> Bodies do weird things on camera. But no, I'm not I'm not gonna cut. I don't I don't cut stuff. These these are alive and real when I sit down and record these. So she's going gangbusters, but what got us talking was me seeing that on her Facebook page. I'm no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. Now that comes from the Serenity Prayer, which is Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There is far too much that gets mislabeled things that we cannot change. There's far more that we can change than we give credit to. And that requires wisdom to know the difference. So this, I'm no longer accepting the things I cannot change, I'm changing the things I cannot accept, that is the spirit of the serenity prayer because we need the wisdom to know the difference. So, like I say, it goes in quotes, the things I cannot change. Uh, I'm, I'm no longer accepting those. And just something is clicking for me, which is why I made this video now. I wanted to record this while I'm going at this. So, I'm excited about computer programming language arrays. Yes. As an American in Asia, I'm writing my computer language teaching curriculum. And I'm testing it on the Taiwanese around me. I'm, I'm going to, hey, hey I want to try to teach you this. And then I want to see if you can learn it. But, but I'm only eight years old. Can an eight-year-old learn? No, eight-year-olds can learn fine. I did. Let me, you're, you're a perfect laboratory rat. So he's like, okay. 
It's an eight-year-old understands computer programming language. He's, he's getting mouthy with his mother. Not with his father, who's an engineer, by the way. He knows C language, so, you know, not going to happen there. But he gets, mom, mom, you don't know what a variable is. <laughs> you know, so, and she, it tickles her pink. She loves, parents love it when their kids know more than them because it means that the future is secure. You know, that, that's the idea. Shoulders, uh, standing on shoulders of giants and all that. So, I explained to this eight-year-old kid today a race. Not eighth grader. Eight year old. There's no reason that six year olds can't type and that eight year olds can't do computer language. Not sixth grade like we do in school. Six years old. Type computer typing should be a, a, a first grade class, maybe kindergarten. And I've written the software to do it. I've done many of these things that I know work. And today, when I was doing arrays with a kid, I was thinking, what is an array? How do you explain an array? Well, I will explain that in another video when I finish my verb.vip language curriculum. And I just decided today that I'm going to make a book. I'm going to make a printable book with this computer language curriculum. It starts by teaching concepts with Linux, where they're very simple to understand. And very practical, because it's how to use your computer. It's how to pop the hood on your computer and use it, basically, uh, for the software. And if you understand that, you can be a simple, very easy power user on your computer. And you know the computer languages, the easiest way to understand a lot of those concepts. And then later, when you're studying C language or PHP or JavaScript or Python, then the concepts are the same. And you can learn those a whole lot faster because you're not learning concepts that are difficult and a language that's difficult at the same time. You already got the concepts and now it's just the language. So, uh, of course, you know, of course, I would do that when I would teach piano. Focus on where the fingers go, get the fingers strong, get the fingers able to work. There we go. And then with the book reading, that's reading. We don't give the student the book and go home and say, that's your homework to learn a song. Uh, no, 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 too many things at once. So we, we focus on one skill at a time and we get all kinds of amazing results. And I've done this with English, computer programming, and piano. So... Arrays. What is an array? Well, <clears throat> an array is basically a variable with alternate realities. That really, it see, an array is like a miniature database in this one, one little word in your programming language. There's this mini database in it. And, and when you're, humor me if you don't know what I'm talking about, but nor, there's a thing called a variable. It's just like a variable in math, only it's a word instead of a letter. And usually you put a dollar sign in front of it. Maybe depending. So there's a variable that can be different things. Well, an array is like a variable, like a math variable, but it's got a parentheses like next to it, it explains just a little bit, and you can put a miniature database in it. And, and if, you, if, you, if you use it with a number, you refer to something in that database. That's how it works. And it can be, to understand an array, you got to draw out a little chart while you're, you're doing your, you know, your work. Well, it all of a sudden made sense to me. Stop thinking of it as a chart. It's a variable, just like a math variable, with alternate realities. It's, it's that, that pseudoscience from Star Trek. You know, you got Captain Kirk in, in our base reality, and then you got Captain Kirk in that, that alternate reality. No, like this became a thing, and in the TV series Deep Space Nine, they went back to that alternate reality and would talk about Captain Kirk. And So, just, like, in I don't believe... No, 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 no. Quantum mechanics, I don't believe that there is another reality out there with another Jesse Steele in it. I don't believe any other reality would ever be so lucky. So I, I think I'm the only one. And yes, so an array is a variable with alternate realities. And that hit me today. I explained it to the eight-year-old and he's going, okay, all right, okay, I get it. And, and I wanted to see if he knew what was going on. So I drew out a quick test and he just goes, dup, 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 that's it. Okay. And I'm, I'm like, I'm bored. I'm like, okay, fine, get out of here. <laughs> so, arrays, alternate realities. Learned that in Asia. And everything's clicking for me. See, there are a lot of kids in Taiwan that I could teach this to. But see, if I went and I taught this to one family... There's, there's one family that would love the brilliant Jesse teaching. But see, if I do too much of that, I'm even as a volunteer, because of Taiwan's 
xenophobic laws, paranoid of foreigners, someone could very easily come along and say, you're working without a license and have me deported. And so there are kids all over Taiwan that are not able to learn the evil, dangerous, horrible, effective Jesse teaching because they have to protect the Taiwanese from the outsiders. Now, there's, there's a place. You've got to protect domestic jobs in a country. But these, these laws are hurting people. They want their kids to learn English. But if you travel to Taiwan, you're not allowed to help a kid learn English. You, you got to go through this huge fat rigmarole. And it's, it's an enormous rigmarole. It's, it's, a nor, it's, as, it's like, what, that's way too much. That's, that's unnecessary. It's like these laws were written in fear. And I've, I've been, I've got to work overtime just to be subpar in Taiwan because of these types of laws. Now, as I understand in America, it's not quite so difficult. And in Hong Kong, it's not so difficult. But Taiwan's got this super, super difficult system. And everywhere I go, there are all these ridiculous regulations. Well, I had my ideas I wanted to give to, you know, America's government. And the State Department, you know, what are you doing? We don't, we don't care about what you're, you know, we don't, what, what, what do you want? And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Why would I give my ideas to the State Department? I should give them to you. And so all this is clicking right about now. And I'm sorry, I'm no longer accepting the things that I cannot change, quote unquote. I'm changing the things I can't accept because I'm seeing the wisdom to know that actually I can change those things. Now, I want to get on my little soapbox and get irritating here. Now, there's this, was it the walk away hashtag? I'm thinking about doing a few videos about those because I never walked away. I saw the problem from the beginning. What I walked away from was Sunday morning. And the problem is there wasn't a movement. There wasn't, there wasn't anyone teaching an alternate way. The walk away movement is leaving the left for <clears throat> for what has always been the majority of the country. That's the thing. The light bulbs going on that, that, that the millennials are finally philosophically, politically agreeing with, aligning themselves with the majority of the people that had ideas that caused America to be the country that it was. Countries don't just have a, a giant, we'll say a, a giant uh, asteroid fall out of the sky and land and then uh, have some strange metal that makes the country rich. <clears throat> Black Panther. <clears throat> That's not how life really works. Countries have quality because of decisions that they make. And all these millennials are starting to learn that. I, I'm, I'm going to be curious to see if they, if they make the connection uh, to uh, <laughs> <Marvel> Comics. <clears throat> see if they figure, no, 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 no. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. I'm curious to see. But I was, I was always there and I'm watching all this happen. So while this walk away thing's going on, I'm curious to see what some people might say who would have said something different a few weeks ago, even a few months ago, maybe Donald Trump, Donald Trump and his Twitter account. Don't you think that that's wisdom to know the difference, you know, things that we need to accept and things that we need the courage to change. You know, I, as, as I've had this clicking aha moment going on for me, I, I, I came across this book. <laughs> you want to know the story? I was in Taiwan with Bo. Bo is one of my, my, my buddies here. I, I made a video about Bo with jesse.tips and working with Bo on stuff. You, you know, you got a factory, you need a factory. Well, Bo and I will go find one for you. Um, not just to be cheaper, but Taiwan has quality infrastructure stuff. HTC has done research for a lot of, like there's a lot of really good research and development stuff in Taiwan. Infrastructure is there. So it's no longer about cheaper labor. Um, first they ignore you, then they mock you, then they fight you, then you win. That was Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they fight you, then they mock you, then they win. I found that from 
a TED Talk, X, TEDx Talk. It's like self-organized. Same theory, though. Same same format. And I found that because I was searching for the book Steal Like an Artist or How to Steal Like an Artist, something like that. And I saw that book at Taitra, Taiwan Trade, because it was raining the other night when Bo and I made that that jesse.tips video, which you can you should find, jesse.tips. Not jesse.coffee, jesse.tips, trade tips. It was raining and I was tired and it was my Mad Media Monday. Podcasting wasn't done yet. And I was wondering, eh, do I really want to go to Taiwan trade now? It's closed. There's no point. But you know, it was one of those things where it's like, eh, go anyway. There was this little voice. Don't, don't get scared and, and run home because it's raining you know, on your motorcycle. Just go anyway. So we went. And he was like, there it is. And I wanted to park the motorcycle. I had a, I, I wanted to go up and pray that, that God was going to give us opportunity. So I said, come on. He goes, you're going to go up there when it's closed? Yeah. So we went up there. It's, it's up in the building. It's a tall building. And it was open because they have this business English class going on. So there was like this lady kind of unofficially doing reception. And we walked in and found out everything we would have found out had we gone in during office hours. This, this is a, I mean, this is great. So while I was up there, I saw how, this book, How to Steal Like an Artist in Chinese. So I, I, I came, and I, I've listened to a few interviews, a TED talk from the guy, an interview from the guy, the, the author of this book. Great, great. And I, I'm familiar with this stuff. Uh, what was his name? Aaron Price, the, the, the guy that did 3D Blender lessons. Blender is a 3D software. He, he talked about this concept. And, and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm an artist and I'm in the design world. So I do that because I wear many hats, as you see, if you're watching my podcast. So I'm, all of this is, is clicking. The State Department ignored me. And, it, and, and this guy just did this video and he says, you need to do what you can't not do. And so I'm, 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 I'm pushing stuff. Part of this Taiwan special is to push stuff. The unacceptable's got to change. And it can really irritate people. People are not mad about Trump's tweets because of the style. They're angry because it's causing a change. And of course, they always say it's about the style. I will not accept anything otherwise because nothing otherwise has caused the non-negotiable must happen change. If someone is going to tell me that we can't do things this way because that's not the way to make the change, that person needs to show me how they have been making the change. And if they can't show me, tough luck. Do not ever tell me and don't you ever accept from other people these words. I don't know how it's supposed to be done, but that's not the way. If you don't know, then you don't know that that's not the way. The test of whether this is the way to do something is to compare it to the way that does the something. That's our Taiwan special.